The day Charlotte first moved in was not at all suitable. The girl suddenly found herself unexpectedly in the throne room in front of the emperor. Charlotte, you're late again. Tomorrow the news of your engagement will be announced throughout the empire. The wedding will take place in six months. This is your fiancé, Duke Irenicus von dem Adler, said the emperor to his daughter. Okay, stop. Who the hell is Duke Adler? A book synopsis I read recently said that Princess Charlotte was the eighth victim of a serial killer. She was murdered on the night of her wedding. The suspect was her fiancé. Frightened, the girl thought to herself. I wanted to read a book last night about the worthless Princess Charlotte and her demise. In the story, a man and a woman investigated crimes and fell in love at the end. How did I happen to be the main character in this story? Greetings, Your Highness, said the Duke to Charlotte. The girl only looked at him fearfully. She had been able to read a few chapters of the novel the previous evening and already knew that the Duke would be the prime suspect in the princess's death. Charlotte, where are your manners? Why are you silent? You're engaged. If you ask me again for an engagement to Duke Killian, I will tell you no at once, and you need not cry and scream as you did last time, warned the girl the emperor. Who the hell is Duke Killian? Since the girl had only read a few chapters of the novel, she didn't know all the characters in the story. If you don't listen to me this time, too, I will revoke your status as a princess. Chamberlain, escort them to the guest room so they can have a closer look at each other, ordered the emperor to his butler. The girl wanted to object, but the emperor wouldn't listen to her. It was extremely embarrassing, and at the same time scary, for the girl to be sitting in front of the man who would eventually have to kill her. The girl noted to herself that alone with her, the duke behaved differently from the way he behaved in front of the emperor. The novel stated that Duke Adler was the most desirable man in the empire. He had money, fame, and good looks. I understand perfectly well that you want to tie yourself in marriage to someone else. There probably isn't a person in the entire empire who doesn't know that. But since this is a marriage of convenience, we have no reason to socialize with each other, said the Duke to the girl. Let us meet you at the wedding itself. There is no need to cloud each other's lives with unnecessary communication. I know for a fact that I will be killed on my own wedding day, and it will most likely be the Duke who will do it. Is this handsome man really a serial killer? Charlotte thought to herself. In her past life in the real world, Charlotte was a prosecutor in the corrupt violent crimes unit. She was constantly investigating various murders. The girl decided to find the culprit while still married, so she could save her life. In order not to attract undue attention to her investigation, she decided to enter into a relationship with the Duke for cover. That way, she could be closer to the suspect. Your Lordship, I fell in love with you at first sight. Please stay with me for a while. Believe it or not, I want to marry for love, not convenience, Charlotte exclaimed. And you want me to believe that, Princess? Until today you begged to marry Duke Killian. Even the court dog knows of your attempts to convince His Highness to marry you to Duke Killian, the Duke said in surprise. If I understand what's going on correctly, the princess was head over heels in love with some Duke Killian, but the emperor is against their marriage. Most likely Duke Killian didn't reciprocate the girl. Charlotte guessed. Your charms have made me forget about other men, and just so you know, I'm extremely amorous. Now you are the one who has taken my heart, Charlotte exclaimed. The girl entered the princess's room and sat down in front of the mirror and scrutinized her face. She needed to get used to her new appearance. Unfortunately, all I know is that Charlotte was considered a worthless princess. She was capricious and spoiled. Her fiancé was the Duke of Adler. On the night of the wedding, the girl dies, and her newly wedded husband comes under suspicion. Thought to herself, Charlotte. Also, after reading a few chapters of the novel, I learned that Duke Adler is suspected of a series of murders. Unfortunately, there is no evidence to put him in prison. If I can't find proof of his crimes in six months, I will die. A maid entered the room. Her name was Hudson. Charlotte learned from the maid that she had been working here for four years. If you've been working here for more than one year, you certainly know my name, noted Charlotte. Yes, your full name is Princess Charlotte von der House of Astard, replied the maid. What a long name I have, after all. Hudson, I'll be honest with you, I don't remember anything that happened before last night. Honestly, I don't fully realize who I really am, Charlotte admitted. And I know that your well-being the last few days has not been good. 
I believe you have lost your memory due to your prolonged hunger strike. I'm very sorry that no one from the Imperial Council came to see you, said Hudson. After analyzing the situation, Charlotte concluded that the local servants did not like the princess. The maids considered her a worthless wretch. Most likely the most adequate maid was Hudson. Hudson, I trust you, I like you. And I wouldn't want anyone else to know about my situation. Why don't we just keep this between us? I can rely on you? Charlotte asked the girl. Of course I will take care of you from now on. I won't tell anyone about your secret, you can rely on me. We need to try to make sure no one guesses about your memory loss, Hudson exclaimed. Although I was recently reminded of the fact that you've had memory problems before. One time you didn't recognize me. You said you'd never had a servant before, the maid said thoughtfully. Hudson told Charlotte that her mother had been the emperor's concubine, but unfortunately died in childbirth. Since the emperor loved the girl's mother, he had officially made her a princess. The current empress and her own children disliked Charlotte. Although the emperor loved his daughter, he paid little attention to her and did not care how his wife and other children felt about her. The nobles did not like Charlotte either, as she was an illegitimate princess. Roughly speaking, she was a princess on paper but not in society. But why did I decide to go on a hunger strike? Is it really all because of Duke Killian? Charlotte asked her maid. Hudson revealed that Killian was the Duke of the Northern Duchy. He was Charlotte's unrequited love. The Duke openly despised the naughty princess, but she still followed him around. And even though Charlotte behaved rather ugly, Duke Adler still agreed to marry her. He probably found some advantage for himself. Charlotte asked the maid to bring her last week's newspapers. The headlines were rife with details of the serial killer investigation. There had been four victims so far. Charlotte remembered that the original story had eight victims. The princess was the ninth. Hudson, I need an assistant, and I even know who would be perfect, Charlotte exclaimed. Princess, why did you decide to find an assistant among the prisoners? asked Hudson. The girl answered her that prisoners usually understood the motives of villains. Meet my brother Stamford. He works as a guard at one of the prisons. I alerted him to the fact that you were looking for an associate among the prisoners. Hudson introduced the dark-haired boy to the princess. Hey, prisoner 2021, come out here to join us, shouted Stamford. A large man immediately appeared in the hallway. His hands and feet were chained together. Stamford warned the princess that this criminal might pounce on her. As you have already heard from the guard, I am a rabid dog that bites nobles. Aren't you afraid of me? The outlaw asked the princess. A few days ago, this criminal named John attacked a lieutenant. He also attacks nobles in hopes of reaching the nobility. Meeting John Watson could be dangerous for you, warned the princess by the maid. I am well aware of the risks, but I wish to speak to him alone, so please leave us alone, asked Charlotte. I'm not going to give you any torture or anything like that. I only have one thing to ask. Let me earn your loyalty. I can pay your bail and provide identification. Charlotte promised. And why would a princess do that? Are you going to play with me like a toy? You don't have to do that. It won't end well, John warned the girl. Don't worry, I don't play with other people's fates. There is something I want in return. I'm looking for something and I want you to help me for six months. I know you have helped the Imperial family often before, Charlotte replied. If you accept my offer, you will become a servant in the princess's chambers. In addition to your bail, you will receive weekly payments, plus all of your mother's medical bills will be paid. So do you agree? Since you're offering such terms, I don't mind giving it a try. I'll address you as master, replied John. Charlotte went to the library and asked the librarian to find her some books. She wanted to research the family tree of the imperial family, read the handbook of the nobility, the history of the empire and its constitution. The girl sat down to study the books. She needed to familiarize herself with this world and adapt to it as soon as possible. The next day, John Watson entered the princess's bedroom. Read what is written here and then burn this note. Charlotte held out a folded piece of paper to John. You want me to gather information on serial killers? John clarified. Charlotte asked him to gather notes on all the cases. She also wanted to know about any special details found at the crime scenes. A maid burst into the princess's room and announced that the emperor had ordered that Charlotte attend today's breakfast meeting. Charlotte already knew that the breakfast meeting is a weekly event where the emperor gathers with all of his children and leads the conversation. Also, 
Attending this breakfast meeting are the ministers. They evaluate which of the emperor's children could succeed to the throne. Charlotte very rarely attended such breakfasts. She was the last person who could succeed to the throne. Therefore, it was surprising that the emperor had called her to this breakfast. His majesty will increase your sponsorship if you make a good impression. At the moment, you really need the money since you have hired Mr. Watson. You must not miss this breakfast, Hudson exclaimed. When Charlotte entered the dining hall, the ministers and her relatives were already seated there. You're late again, Charlotte, grumbled the emperor. I apologize. I was late in learning of the invitation, said Charlotte and took a seat in the vacant chair. You mean the maids forgot to read you the invitation? Prince Frederick, the emperor's firstborn son, clarified to his sister. To be honest, I have never once seen our Charlotte read anything. I doubt she can read it all. Charlotte's older sister, Camille, exclaimed. In the novel, Frederick and Camilla hated their sister Charlotte. Frederick, Camille, stop it. I have invited your sister to this breakfast today because Duke Adler is also present. Their engagement is an extremely favorable event for the empire, exclaimed the emperor. Charlotte's hunger strike was worth it. Thanks to her losing weight, she was able to go from Grand Duke Killian to Duke Adler, Camilla remarked. Yes, all of that only happened because of the hunger strike. She still lacks some sort of education, basic culture, said Frederick, and everyone at the table laughed merrily. Charlotte looked at her fiancé, Duke Adler. The conversation at the table irritated him. But it is understandable, because they ridiculed his future wife, his choice. Charlotte winked cheerfully at the Duke. Charlotte, it's been a long time since you've had breakfast with us. Perhaps you want to share your opinions with us on solving the problems of the empire. But if you're suggesting to solve those problems like the seating guide did last time, then don't, said Frederick. Since I have absolutely no need for the throne, I can say whatever I want. I'm not the real Charlotte, so I won't allow myself to be insulted, the girl thought to herself. I understand you want to involve the army in the harvest, but will the soldiers agree to harvest wheat? Seems to me that you are proposing utter nonsense, said Charlotte to her brother. What Camille is proposing is also utter nonsense. The people in our empire are starving, so they are ready to revolt at any moment. I think it is foolish to export grain to the nearest countries. As for me, I suggest that we give up growing wheat. It is better to choose farms that grow fruits and vegetables and pay them subsidies. When the wheat crop goes down, farmers will have the strength to harvest it on their own. Microeconomics easily solves the problems of price and quality. By helping the farmers, we help the empire. Are you suggesting we grow fruits and vegetables on the land we prepared for wheat? Camille asked, in an irritated voice. There are times when you have to change your plans. The wheat problem can only be solved with cultivation, answered Charlotte. If we produce barley and make whiskey from it to sell, I am sure there will be no export problem. Charlotte, I don't recognize you lately. You have become more mature. Now you will always be present at breakfast. Smiling happily, the emperor said. After breakfast, Charlotte approached Duke Adler and announced to him that they had a date today. Charlotte noticed that Duke Adler's attitude towards her had not changed at all. He only watched her more closely. Duke, you also have a long name like me. May I call you Rainier? In return, you will call me Charlotte, suggested the girl. No, I don't want that, replied the duke. Okay, I guess I'm probably in too much of a hurry. By the way, I asked you out on a date to ask you some questions. I want to learn as much as I can about you. I already told you that I fell in love with you at first sight. Smiling, the girl said, You just look into my eyes. They are full of love and affection. Also in my eyes, you can see the burning passion for you. Charlotte liked men like the duke. You could say he was one of her favorite types of men. Unfortunately, the duke was a murderer, and that stopped the girl from going any further. You can ask me any question that interests you. I will do my best to answer it honestly, promised the duke. Okay, here is my first question for you. Tell me, who was your first love? Charlotte took out a pencil and a notebook. She was ready to take notes. And why are you asking me about my first love? Asked the duke. Charlotte answered him that it was important for her to know about her future husband's past. In reality, the girl was just looking for a motive for murder. She needed to know about the suspect's past. His life could shed light on the crimes. Since in the original story, Princess Charlotte was killed on her wedding night, the motive could have been elementary jealousy. Maybe the Duke had a lover, 
but the emperor also forced him to marry his daughter. Princess, you've had a troubled past as well, am I right? Asked the duke. Don't worry, I've already dealt with my past. I'm already doing well in that regard. All I think about now is you, replied the girl. You don't need to hide anything from me. I am a broad-minded person and am sensitive to my man's past. I have never had a first love, and it is true, though you may not believe me. You might say you are my first and last woman, confessed the duke. The most envied groom in the empire and no experience in relationships? It's all a bit odd. Charlotte's mind flashed. And now it's my turn to ask you questions. I've heard that once you've taken on someone, you don't let them go so easily. Am I one of those cases? I was suddenly curious about the reason for all this. What's going on? Why me specifically? Asked the duke. I've told you before and more than once. I fell in love with you at first sight, exclaimed Charlotte. That's understandable, but what exactly did you fall in love with? What interested you? The duke really wanted to figure out what was going on. He really was curious as to why exactly he had been chosen to be the princess's husband. How could I not fall in love with you? You have blonde hair that shines like sunlight. Your clear eyes, the color of a serene lake, drive me crazy. You have a beautiful body and a pleasant voice. You have many virtues, Charlotte exclaimed. The girl realized that all her words sounded too luscious, but she could think of nothing else. Any rash phrase of hers could arouse the duke's suspicion. He wasn't stupid, so it was necessary to proceed with extreme caution with him. I see, shifting his eyebrows on the bridge of his nose, the duke said. He didn't believe a single word the princess said. The whole thing looked extremely suspicious. In the evening, John handed an envelope to Charlotte. It contained all the data he had collected. The protocols of the Imperial Bureau of Investigation? How did you manage to get these? Charlotte asked in surprise. John decided to keep his investigation secret. John was able to get information on all the victims. The first victim was found 16 weeks ago. It was a woman, the governess of the Earl of Mostyn's family. She was discovered in the afternoon. The woman had been strangled. Fifteen weeks ago, the body of a man was found. He was the head chef of an upscale restaurant. He was found dead of asphyxiation. The body was in the restaurant where he had worked before. Ten weeks ago, the victim was again a woman. She was the owner of a bakery that was mostly frequented by commoners. She was also strangled. The event took place on a weekend. Eight weeks ago, the victim was a man, the prime minister's secretary. He was found dead of suffocation in the morning in his own home. Since all of the victims were strangled, I dare say the perpetrator is a sturdy, trained male, over 180 centimeters tall. John shared his thoughts. Charlotte remembered that the Duke's height was 1 meter 85 centimeters. But what is the motive? If the Duke is a criminal, why is he killing? It's a pity we can't examine the crime scene or the bodies of the victims. They would be able to tell us a lot. Right now, we can only go by the protocols that have been drawn up. Charlotte muttered. And may I ask what the princess is investigating the serial killer for? John asked. Charlotte didn't bother to tell him anything. She wanted to keep it a secret. Well then, I'll just run your errands. To be honest, the reason isn't that important to me. Is there anything else I can do for you? John asked. Charlotte asked him, wanting him to find out as much as he could about Duke Adler. But isn't Duke Adler your fiancé? Or do you want to know about his relationships with women? John clarified. I want to know absolutely everything about him. Get me any information you can, Charlotte asked. She didn't want to tell John anything for the reason that she was afraid the villain might use the information against her. Charlotte sent Duke Adler daily letters requesting a meeting. The Duke read the princess's letters, but was in no hurry to answer them. Your Highness, a letter from the Duke has finally arrived. An excited maid, Hudson, burst into the princess's room. The duke suggested that the princess meet at the opera house this evening. Duke, you look very handsome tonight. I almost thought you were a sculpture of the opera house, Charlotte exclaimed as Duke Adler approached her. He said nothing in response to the compliment. Charlotte thought to herself that with such a suspect, the investigation would be a long one. I heard that tickets for this performance are hard to get, but I still manage to. This is the best performance in the entire empire, said the duke to avoid sitting in complete silence. It's dark in here. I absolutely cannot see the expression on his face. 
Sometimes I think that by his actions he is asking me not to bother him unnecessarily. Charlotte thought to herself. To be honest, I'm not interested in this performance at all, even though it's expensive. I would enjoy just talking to you, and I would have been happy to see your face. I really regret that I don't have that opportunity right now. Charlotte admitted. I can't see you daily. I'm very busy these days. The most frequent we can meet is twice a week, said the Duke to the girl. Of course I want to see you daily, but I will agree to see you twice a week, Charlotte exclaimed excitedly. The Duke gently nudged the sleeping girl with his shoulder. Feeling the nudge, Charlotte opened her eyes. The performance is over. We are left here alone, whispered the Duke. Is it over already? Shame on me for falling asleep. It was all from lack of sleep. Charlotte muttered embarrassedly. The girl was embarrassed because the Duke would think that she was extremely ill-mannered since she could afford such a thing. Have you not been getting enough sleep lately because of me? Asked the Duke. You're right. I think about you all the time. That's why I can't sleep, answered Charlotte. It was true. She was constantly thinking about the information she received. The girl wanted to get to the truth. She needed to know if the Duke was really a serial killer. Next time, let's arrange our meeting in advance. That way you can get a good night's sleep, said the Duke and rose from his seat. Your Grace, this is an invitation to a ball in honor of a debutante. The letter states that this event will be attended by the Grand Duke Killian. Will you be going to this ball? Asked the princess by her maid, Hudson. No, I am no longer interested in Duke Killian. Lately, I have taken an interest in Duke Adler, replied Charlotte. Then I will write a disclaimer, said Hudson. Don't be in a hurry to do that. Rather tell me, is there going to be anything new to high society at this event? Why would they have an event like this all of a sudden? Asked Charlotte. The ball in question will be given in honor of young Lady Mostyn. Her parents are quite powerful, and she is extremely attractive. It is likely that at this ball the lady will be looking for a husband. The maid replied. Charlotte asked the maid for an invitation. Maybe she should have gone to this ball. We need to find out how a serial killer chooses his victim. What's the connection between them? The last murder was eight weeks ago. Charlotte was extremely curious as to why the unsub was inactive. Had he decided to lay low? or still couldn't find a suitable victim. The girl remembered that the first victim of the murderer was the governess of the Earl of Mostyn. But what was the connection between her and the criminal? Could he be mentally ill? What if he had a reason to kill the governess? If so, what was it? I'll have to go to that ball. By researching the Earl's family in the Mostyn manner, I can find the reason for the governess's murder. I also need to find out how the victim's family lives. The girl thought to herself. I've changed my mind, I'm going to that ball, said Charlotte to her maid. If you are busy, you need not come to the ball in honor of the debutante. You need not appear there as my partner, said the girl to the Duke. Then what was your letter about? asked the Duke. What letter are we talking about now? Charlotte did not understand. I received dot this letter a few days ago. The Duke held out a crumpled piece of paper to the girl. Charlotte ran her eyes over the letter. A few days ago, she had indeed written to him about her feelings and asked to meet. In this letter, you wrote that you miss me. Then why don't you want me to come to the debutante ball as your fiancé? Asked the Duke. Strange. Somehow I thought my words would make him happy. Surprised, the girl thought. It's not because I don't want to socialize with you. I just don't want you to do anything because I asked you to. If you don't want to go anywhere, I take absolutely no offense to that. You are entitled to do as you wish, Charlotte replied. But I don't mind attending that ball. I was going there for Lady Mostyn and her family. If I go there without my fiancé, my reputation will suffer, said the Duke, and snatched the letter from the girl's hands. Then I shall be glad to have you to keep me company. However, I want to warn you in advance that I will be wearing a rather revealing dress for this event, Charlotte admitted. And why would you wear an open dress? Who do you want to impress there? I don't mean to sound old-fashioned, but why would you wear something revealing? Asked the blushing Duke. I don't want to appear slutty in your eyes, but unfortunately I've run out of money, and the only dresses left in my closet are open-top dresses. I can't wear a dress that people have already seen, replied Charlotte. Charlotte entered the dining hall with her head held proudly high. Today she was determined to prove to the emperor that she was worthy of more. Her goal was to provide herself with an extra income.
The girl was tired of the fact that although she was a princess, she had absolutely no money of her own. She felt like a beggar living in a golden cage. Charlotte sat down across from Duke Adler. He immediately bowed his head in greeting. This surprised the girl, because before the Duke had tried to ignore her during breakfast. So, the first thing on the agenda. We need to discuss with you the impact of the disappearance of magical stones and wizards of our empire. We need to set a course for the future. One of the ministers announced in a loud voice. What is happening now? What kind of magic and wizards are we talking about now? I didn't read anything about that in the book. The girl thought to herself in surprise, but tried not to look embarrassed. Since Charlotte came up with a pretty good idea last time, I suggest that she speak first this time, said the minister. What? I don't know anything about this topic. If I fail this time, they'll think I was just lucky last time. Frightenedly thought the girl. Suddenly, one of the maids fell to the floor and wheezed loudly. Foam came out of her mouth. Charlotte ran up to the maid and bent over her. What are you doing? Why did you go near her? What if she's contagious? Camilla asked in a contemptuous tone. This maid's lips and nails have taken on a bluish hue. There are bright dark brown spots on her skin. Her mouth smells like bitter almonds. She's probably poisoned, so don't eat anything here and try not to inhale any pungent odors, asked Charlotte. Charlotte looked at the Duke. He had an extremely upset look on his face. This murder is different from previous ones. A completely different person could be involved here. Charlotte thought to herself. I suspect the maid was poisoned with cyanide. It is unlikely she was the main victim. Someone was trying to poison those present. Apparently the maid accidentally ate some product containing the poison, said Charlotte to those present. Thanks to you, princess. We were able to prevent a disaster. We analyzed the powdered sugar that was sprinkled on the pancakes and found that it contained impurities of cyanide, said the commander of the knights, and bowed before Charlotte. Is there really a chef involved in this crime? asked Charlotte to the Commodore. The chef was not present today, so the main courses were prepared by the saucier. He won't admit his guilt and says he doesn't understand how it happened, replied the Commodore. But isn't the chef in charge of the kitchen? He's responsible for all the dishes and he's the one who makes the menu. He could have done something with the powdered sugar and then left, pondered aloud Charlotte. Everyone knows that salt and sugar are very expensive in the empire. Soucier wouldn't use such expensive ingredients without the chef's knowledge. Why don't you arrest the chef before he escapes? You should have him interrogated. As expected, the chef was caught when he tried to cross the border. He turned out to be a spy from the neighboring country of Cortina, who had infiltrated the palace some time ago. About seven years ago, the empire had subjugated the Cortina country. Since then, the people of that country had been constantly fighting for their independence. The failed assassination attempt on the emperor had raised even more unrest in the country. All those who could not prevent the attempt on the emperor's life were executed. Charlotte, on the other hand, was able to earn many favor points with the emperor by preventing his poisoning. The emperor doubled his daughter's budget. I caught the culprit, and my reputation and funding grew. I really hope it continues like this, Charlotte thought happily to herself. Oops, this is the first time I've ever stayed so long in the library. It's getting too late, I should go home. And what made me think it was only the chef who wanted to poison the emperor? What if there was a whole team at work? On top of that, there are so many people who hate Princess Charlotte. I'm probably in danger too. Charlotte decided to hurry, but she stumbled and fell to the ground. As she fell to the ground, the girl cried out in pain. Princess, are you all right? I heard your scream and came running. Are you alone here? Are you all right? Asked John, who approached. John gave the girl a hand and helped her up. Thank you for your help. And while you're here, tell me what you've learned so far. Charlotte asked John as they entered her room. I have learned quite a bit of information, and it will make you happy, said John. Since the conversation was going to be quite long, but he decided to sit down on a vacant chair. Duke Adler leads a rather lonely private life. He is not involved in any scandals. There are no rumors about him. He seems to think it's all a waste of time. But his father, Duke Adler Sr., was not like that at all. Overall, the Duke's family history is too complicated. His biological mother died due to illness five years ago. The current Duchess Adler is his stepmother. 
The relationship between the Duke and his stepmother is rather strained, but he is very close to his own younger sister, Lady Blair. Did you know the Duke didn't serve in the army after he graduated from the military academy? Charlotte asked. Only the Duke knows the answer to that question. By the way, the first victim who was a governess also worked in Duke Adler's house as well. Princess, why don't you think about security? John advised. I had guards, but I disbanded them because none of my guards looked like Killian, answered Charlotte. You disbanded your guards because they didn't look like your lover? Princess, come on! John exclaimed and laughed out loud. If you do decide that you need a guard, I can offer you one. The next day, Charlotte went shopping for a new dress. She now had enough money to update her closet. In one of the cafes, the girl noticed three of Camilla's girlfriends. These ladies had been friends with her sister since the academy. There was some blonde girl sitting next to the girls. Charlotte decided to join them. If I'm lucky, I might be able to hear the information I need here. Charlotte thought carefully, listening to what the girls were gossiping about. They say that this time, the minimum bid will be 500 million gold this time, and that's especially for us. If this investment brings a good return, I plan to open my own salon in the near future, Christina exclaimed. And I'll probably hold off a bit. I don't have that much money this time, Tiffany said with a laugh. Oh, how quickly time flies after all. I promised my mother today that I would have lunch with her. Mistress, will you come with us too? asked Stephanie to the petite blonde. The girl nodded in agreement. Well, it's time for me to go as well. I am grateful for your time, your highness. I was extremely interested in speaking with you, Christina exclaimed. Damn, I never learned anything, Charlotte thought to herself wistfully. She felt sorry for the wasted time. Your highness, then I will say goodbye to you as well, the blonde said and was about to leave when Charlotte grabbed her arm. Wait, I won't keep you long. I wouldn't advise you to invest in the perfume business that Lady Christina was talking about. Somehow I feel like there's a scam in there somewhere, said Charlotte to the girl. And what do you mean by that? clarified the blonde girl. Think to yourself, where is the guarantee of big profits if the business hasn't even opened? Besides, there's no material manifestation of the business, just fundraising. Believe me, I have experience with scammers, Charlotte exclaimed. It may be hard for you to take my word for it, but please don't invest in this case. If this case does seem profitable, I will recoup your losses in the same amount. Mark my words. I warn you of the danger, for you and I will soon be in bread. Charlotte recognized the blonde woman standing before her. It was Duke Adler's younger sister. Her name was Blair Vaughn Dem Adler. If you happen to find my advice useful, make sure you tell me something about your brother the next time you see him. I'm very interested in the Duke, Charlotte asked. Of course, your highness. With a smile, the girl replied. When Hudson opened the box with the dress the courier had brought, Charlotte noticed that it was a completely different dress. It looked much more expensive than the one Charlotte had bought. In the box with the dress was a letter. Duke Adler wrote that he would pick Charlotte up from her palace at six o'clock this evening. He even sent you a dress. What a good man he is. How lucky you are to have a fiancé, your highness. Hudson exclaimed. Take my carriage and go to the Earl of Mostyn's house. Expect me somewhere near the estate. I want you close by in case something happens, whispered Charlotte, asked John as they approached the Duke's carriage. Princess, does nothing occur to you when you look at my tailcoat? Duke Adler asked the girl on the way to the Earl of Mostyn's estate. Of course it comes. I cannot help but note how elegant and sophisticated a tailcoat you have chosen today. I'm sure no one will be able to outshine you today. With a cheerful smile, the girl said, It turns out you're going to fall in love with me again, am I right? Asked the Duke. Of course, your charm is simply endless, replied Charlotte. She didn't understand why the Duke had started this conversation. Charlotte felt extremely uncomfortable. It was her first time attending a ball. The girl really hoped that the Duke would be able to support her in case of anything. Duke Adler, I never thought I would meet you at a debutante ball. Oh, wow, my respects, Princess Charlotte. The Marquis of Breguet exclaimed. He patted his pal Duke Adler on the shoulder. I thought I had gone mad and was having visions. You understand, you're hard to catch at events like this. And you, Princess, I didn't expect to see you in such modest attire. You usually dress differently. I have decided to expand my dressing preferences, and I am grateful for your attentiveness to me, Marquis, Charlotte replied. Had I only known you were of such a gentle nature, I would have claimed your hand myself. 
I would have offered my candidacy when His Majesty himself was looking for a suitor for you, exclaimed the Marquis. What a pity you were too late, Charlotte said with a smirk. From her conversation with the Marquis, the girl realized that no one wanted to be the princess's fiancé before. Let me take Duke Adler away from you for a while. He appears so rarely in high society that everyone will soon jump out of their tails and gowns from curiosity. I hope for your understanding, said the Marquis of Breguet to the princess. Of course I understand, replied Charlotte and smiled sweetly. I am sure that the people here present do not put me at odds with anything. Of course, Duke Adler stands out among them. Perhaps the real Charlotte dressed provocatively to draw attention to herself. Thought Charlotte, looking at the people present at the ball. Wow, I've only been in her body for a few weeks, but I've already developed a liking for her. And if you think about it, it's good that no one notices me. Being invisible, I'll be able to examine everything here. While walking around the Earl's estate, Charlotte happened to run into Duke James von Demkillian. Grand Duke Killian was not afraid of the imperial family, so he never neglected to openly mock Charlotte who was attached to him. Following Duke Killian, the princess began to be mocked by the rest of the aristocrats as well. Seeing Charlotte Duke Killian turned around and walked back. Duke Killian, don't you think this kind of behavior towards the princess of this empire is unacceptable? And don't you know that turning your back on members of the royal family is considered an insult to the crown? Charlotte asked. What other intrigue have you decided to set up? Now you intend to threaten me? Duke Killian exclaimed in an irritated voice. I decided to warn you in advance so that you don't accidentally forget your manners. After all, next time I might indeed accuse you of insulting the crown. Now, allow me to leave, said Charlotte, and walked past the duke. Having said all that you will leave here so easily? asked Duke Killian. Is there anything left unspoken? clarified Charlotte. As you already know, I am engaged to Duke Adler. So please disabuse yourself of the notion that I might still have any feelings for you. It is all long past. Charlotte entered the dead governess's room. The girl had been 28 years old at the time of her death. She was a graduate of the Imperial Institute of Pharmacology. The girl had died in the outermost room on the second floor of the Earl of Mostyn's residence. Suddenly, Charlotte felt weakness in her legs. The girl's throat began to chill. Most likely she was having an allergic reaction to the unknown substance in the room. And who are you? asked the maid who entered the room. Hell, I can't have anyone knowing that I, the princess, am on the case of the dead governess. But somehow, I feel like this maid is completely unaware of who I really am. I need to get out of here without arousing suspicion, Charlotte thought to herself. So you don't know who I am? Is this what kind of maids are recruited for the Earl of Mostyn's residence? Answer me, are you in charge of this room? How do you clean it if as soon as I walked in here, I got hives all over me? Charlotte was indignant. Mistress, forgive me for such an unpleasant misunderstanding, exclaimed the maid, bowing low to Charlotte. And your hives are most likely not from the dust, but from the peaches. The man who lived here often experimented with peaches. It is said that peach fluff was found in every crevice of the furniture. The maids who cleaned the place complained of hives. Well, if you say so, I forgive you for your behavior. Charlotte exclaimed and left the governess's room. Walking back down the hallway to the banquet hall, Charlotte heard excited female voices. The girl stopped to overhear the conversation. We've lost an enormous amount of money. Who would have thought that Mr. Ian could run off with the money so shamelessly? Lady Blair, you are an utterly dishonorable girl. We can't just let this go when you've been so treacherous to us. Charlotte wanted to walk past, but hearing the name of Duke Adler's sister, everything had already decided to intervene. Entering the room, Charlotte saw Blair and Camilla's three best girlfriends. And what are you two doing here? Charlotte asked in an angry tone. Princess, this is absolutely none of your business, Christina exclaimed. And why is it none of my business? Lady Blair will soon be part of my family, said Charlotte, crossing her arms over her chest. Look what an assistant our Blair has acquired, Stephanie said with a snicker. Unlike you fools, Lady Blair wasn't the victim of a fraud and didn't lose any money, Charlotte said defiantly. Wait, you called us silly? Princess, don't you think you're crossing the line? Stephanie asked in an annoyed voice. Crossing the line? 
What else do you call the three of you taking out your anger on this girl? Isn't that a stupid thing to do? Charlotte asked. It's not taking out your anger. The fact is that the young lady has committed a misdemeanor. She promised she would invest with us, but in the end, she's the only one who didn't. Christina was indignant. But I didn't promise you anything. I said I'd think about your offer, screamed Blair. She was outraged that she was being accused of something she hadn't done. We had no idea Lady Blair was so fickle. Ah, perhaps she learned that from someone who changes men like gloves, Christina exclaimed. And you're sure you can answer for your words? Do you want to be accused of insulting the crown? Charlotte asked icily. What insult to the crown are we talking about now? I didn't name any names. Why would you be offended by that? It's not like I said anything that would offend your sensibilities. Christina replied. Do you think punishment for insulting the royal family can only be obtained through legal means? Charlotte asked with a smirk. Charlotte walked over to the table and picked up the bottle of red wine standing on it. Didn't you know that fists work faster than the law? Charlotte asked, and began to slowly approach the girls. The princess has lost her mind, shouted the girls and jumped out of the room. Don't get any ideas, I didn't mean to hit them, I just wanted to scare them, said Charlotte to Lady Blair. Thank you for your help. You were right. That case turned out to be a hoax. It had recently come to light that Mr. Ian was a major debtor, so he decided to make some money this way. Lowering her eyes to the floor, Blair said, Suddenly the wine bottle slipped out of Charlotte's hands and fell to the floor with a clatter. A panting Duke Adler ran into the room. What is going on here? Princess, what have you already messed up here? What did you want to do to my sister? In an agitated voice, the Duke asked, I saw with what frightened faces the girls ran out of this room. What has happened here? Why is this bottle broken? Duke, you've got it all wrong. The bottle just slipped out of my hands. I didn't break it on purpose. Charlotte exclaimed. Do you want to feed me your lies again? You just told me yourself that you broke the bottle. You want me to believe that you had absolutely nothing to do with it. And I don't want to hear any excuses from you, said the Duke to the girl. I thought there was a change in you, but it turns out that people can't change their nature quickly. His eyes now tell me that he certainly won't believe a word I say. He might not even want to try to believe me. He looks like he doesn't want to hear from me. Charlotte thought to herself and left the room. All I wanted to do was help, but everything turned against me. Perhaps the reason Duke Adler will kill me is because he simply hates me. You're a little early. Isn't the dance over already? John asked the girl. She bumped into him on the way out of the Earl's Manor. I haven't danced today, Charlotte admitted. And why didn't you dance? Don't you like dancing? It's so easy, all you have to do is twirl back and forth, said John and began to stagger from side to side. I see you're returning without Duke Adler's escort. Wait here, I'll bring your carriage. If you are tired from tonight, I can carry you in my arms. Or will you reach the carriage by yourself? No, I feel very weak in my legs. I won't be able to walk to the carriage, said Charlotte and jumped into John's arms. You must be joking. I thought you only had frail arms, but it turns out you also have leg problems. There isn't a single strong point in your body. And by the way, you should eat more. You're as weightless as a piece of fluff said John. Turning around, Charlotte saw Duke Adler standing on the stairs. She didn't care what he thought of the situation. Princess, I wanted to tell you that the dress you bought yourself at the store looked much better on you. This one turned out to be too boring, said John to the girl. Your Highness, are you really not going to write a letter to the Duke today either? But you have been writing to him every day, haven't you? Did you really quarrel with him at the ball? Asked Hudson. Princess, it's the fifth! An agitated Jones ran into the room. What are you talking about now? Didn't understand Charlotte. I'm talking about a serial killer right now. A fifth victim was discovered at five o'clock this morning. And most likely you know this man. It's the Marquis of Breguet, replied John. The Adler family was noted for its position and wealth in the empire. The eldest son of the family was a Renicus von dem Adler, abbreviated Renicus. Inheriting the most good genes from his perfect parents, he became an enviable groom. One day, quite unexpectedly, tragedy burst into Renicus's happy life. His mother became very ill and soon passed away. His father did not pine for his spouse for a long time. He soon married a new woman. A couple of years later, the family again experienced grief. Duke Adler Sr. passed away. Renicus took over the family. 
One day the emperor offered Renicus to take his youngest daughter Charlotte as his wife. The duke could not go against the emperor's will, so he agreed to the marriage, even though he did not like his bride at all. Renicus only wanted to marry Charlotte in order to keep his rights to own the mines. If it wasn't for the mines, the duke would definitely refuse the marriage. Renicus saw that Princess Charlotte liked him, so he decided to reciprocate. But to his surprise, the girl turned out to be quite intelligent and interesting. Renicus enjoyed spending time with her. Renicus bought expensive tickets to the opera, hoping that the girl would like the performance, but she fell asleep. That day, Renicus noted to himself that the girl didn't have an ounce of etiquette or restraint. Sitting at the opera, the duke hoped very much that no one he knew would see his disgrace. Charlotte wrote daily letters to the duke, in which she told him how much she loved him. Over time, the duke noticed that he had become dependent on Charlotte's praise. Charlotte warned the duke that she would go to the ball in a revealing dress. Renicus disliked this very much, so he decided to buy a dress for the girl of his own taste. When Renicus saw a purple dress in the store window, he immediately wanted to buy it for Charlotte. Renicus wanted to present the dress to the princess on the day of the breakfast meeting, but his plans were disrupted by an unexpected incident of food poisoning. The duke was very surprised that Princess Charlotte was the main person in solving the crime. The duke was also amazed that in all the commotion, Charlotte was constantly looking for him with her eyes. This further convinced the duke that the girl likes him. At the ball, debutantes, duke met with his old friend Marquis Breguet. Back at the military academy, they were constantly competing with each other. Renicus didn't like the Marquise's fake friendliness. And so, I rescued the duke from the clutches of the worst woman in the empire and brought him to you, exclaimed the Marquis, leading Renicus over to a small group of aristocrats. You have to be so brazen to buy a dress that was meant for another girl, Countess Bronte exclaimed. When I found out that my dress had been bought by Princess Charlotte, I was so hurt that I could not sleep for a long time. I had, after all, spent so long looking for a dress to match my eyes exclaimed the daughter of Viscount Whitaker. And there was nothing I could do about it. Since the princess demands that the dress be given to her, one has to give in. I say this only between us, but she's very unscrupulous. And from whom did you hear that story about the dress? asked Renicus of the Viscount's daughter. I saw it myself in the store, and if you had been there, you would have been very surprised at it. You should have heard the horrible words she said to me that day, said the Viscount's daughter. My lady, are you sure your words are true? Clarified the duke. Of course I am sure that the princess took that dress from me. Why should I lie to you? Exclaimed the viscount's daughter. The fact is that this dress was bought by me. I myself personally came to this store and shamelessly bought this dress. And if my memory serves me correctly, Lady Whitaker was not in the store at that moment. The duke admitted. And I didn't claim that I was in the store at that exact moment. You probably misunderstood me. In fact, I heard about it from the shopkeeper. Smiling innocently, the Viscount's daughter said, The shopkeeper didn't know who I was buying this dress for. I was in the store all alone and gave this dress to the princess afterwards. Lady Whitaker, you certainly have talent. You came up with such a fascinating story just from seeing the dress. And if you're going to lie, do it more confidently. I warn you that I will not tolerate any false information about my fiancé. Huh, Lady Whitaker must be a little mistaken. Princess Charlotte is not known for her reputation. She's known for lying every other word she says, said the Marquis of Breguet with a laugh. It is not for the man who does the dirtiest things in Cortina to judge her, said the Duke of Adler threateningly. Take note, the Grand Duke Killian has just arrived. We must go to greet him at once, Lady Samantha exclaimed. Everyone immediately forgot the story about the dress and rushed over to Duke Killian. Renicus noticed that the princess was nowhere to be found. Had she too gone to greet Grand Duke Killian? Duke Killian is in demand with the girls as usual. I'm only glad he's doing so well, Lord Broadley exclaimed. I think Duke Killian is too naive. You can play with a girl who's sticking to him on her own, and all he does every time is to refuse her and not even lay a finger on her, Marquis Breguet remarked. Really, how do we know that he hasn't secretly had his fun with her already? Maybe he just doesn't want to advertise it. Hearing the Marquise's words, the Duke clenched his glass so tightly in his hand that it shattered into tiny shards. Don't you think you're crossing the line? The Duke asked icily. 
Marquis, you will have to answer for your words, said the duke and threw his handkerchief under the Marquis's feet. How disgusting this whole thing is. I certainly wouldn't have come here if it weren't for the princess. Irritatedly thought Renicus walking down the corridor, he was determined to find Charlotte after all. Turning the corner, Renicus saw the princess. She was talking to Duke Killian. Renicus went to the balcony to think about what he had seen. What if the girl's words about her love for him were a deception? What if she still loved Duke Killian? Maybe she came here just for him. What if the Marquis was right and every other word she said was a lie? Suddenly the Duke heard a woman scream. Jumping out into the corridor, Duke saw the frightened girls. They ran out of one of the rooms with a scream. Then the sound of breaking glass was heard. When Renicus burst into the room, he saw the princess standing next to his sister. There was a broken bottle of wine lying on the floor. Brother, have you lost your mind? Why did you say all that? Why did you do that to her? Blair exclaimed as Charlotte left the room. The princess helped me when I was being bullied, and she did drop the bottle by accident. How can you act like that without even listening to her? I wanted to explain everything to you, but you wouldn't even let me get a word in edgewise. Why did you pour all your negativity on her? How am I supposed to look into the princess's eyes after that? Said Blair and sobbed bitterly. The duke hurried to catch up with Charlotte. He really wanted to apologize to her. When Renicus went outside, he saw Charlotte in some man's arms. Noticing the duke, the girl immediately turned away. There had been no letters from Charlotte for several days in a row, though they had come every day before. Renicus guessed that the princess had taken offense at him and didn't want to see him anymore. Mr. Duke, a letter has arrived from Princess Charlotte. She is now under investigation, said the agitated butler. A few hours before these events, John had been telling Princess Charlotte the specifics of the latest crime. The perpetrator did not reappear until ten weeks later. The estimated time of the crime is early this morning, same place as the previous four times the victim died of asphyxiation. It's most likely the same serial killer. Marquis Breguet was not badly built because he had military training. So the perpetrator must have the same strength as the Marquis, if not more. By the way, the body was found in Nowood Alley. That's not a place where aristocrats should go. Since I was born in those parts, I know that Nowood Alley is a slum teeming with homeless and criminals, which is the shadow side of a perfect empire. Do you think it would be suspicious if a princess wanted to see a dead body? Charlotte asked John. Naturally, it would arouse suspicion. Even I don't really understand why you would suddenly want to investigate this case. John said surprised. Charlotte reminded him that they had once agreed that he wouldn't ask unnecessary questions. Anyway, I definitely need to check out the body. The investigators have their own jail cells, don't they? Charlotte asked. The girl had an idea. Charlotte put on a wig and changed into the Hudson dress she had sneakily stolen. You need to watch me from afar. As soon as you see the investigators catch me, you'll need to follow us, explained Charlotte to John. Charlotte uncorked a bottle of wine and poured the contents into herself. A short while later, the drunken girl loitering in the alley was noticed by the investigators passing by. There is an easy way out of this arrest if a small bail is granted. This is the most minor offense that one can get locked up for, so this news won't reach the emperor. Charlotte thought to herself, Is it okay to take a person away like this? I don't want to sit here, I want to go home. In a drunken voice, Charlotte shouted, What a bastard. You'll get in trouble if you keep hanging around in neighborhoods like this and drinking until you pass out. Don't you know there was a murder there this morning? The policeman asked the girl. And what kind of murder? What kind of nonsense are you talking about? Exclaimed Charlotte. Girl, don't you even read the news? The victim's body is lying right now in the next room in the morgue. With a cheerful snicker, the policeman said, Great. So the morgue is right under my nose. Charlotte rejoiced to herself. The girl asked the policeman to take her to the restroom, but he refused her. Dear sir, where is your superior? Quickly bring him here. Do you even know who I am? I had lunch with your boss yesterday. Are you ready to take responsibility for my actions? If you don't take me to the bathroom, I'll do it right here. Screamed Charlotte. Fine, I'll take you to the restroom. Just stop having concerts here, asked the policeman. As luck would have it, the morgue was right next to the restroom. I need to step away for a while. You do your business and go back in quietly. Don't even think about running away before your trusted person comes for you, said the policeman to the girl. Charlotte nodded vigorously. Instead of the restroom, Charlotte went to the morgue. 
Lifting the sheet, Charlotte began to scrutinize the Marquise's body. His face is dead pale. It doesn't look like strangulation. If he had died from suffocation, there would be traces of blood stasis on his face. But the Marquis's face is clean, showing no signs of resistance or self-defense. Thought to herself Charlotte. It is unlikely that a man who has received military training would not defend himself in any way. By the way, there are red spots on other parts of the body. It's a reaction to the poisoning. He was poisoned first and then changed the cause of death to strangulation. I don't know how advanced the field of forensic medicine is here, but what is clear is that the investigators were deceived by the perpetrator. But it's not clear to me why he's recasting the cause of death. In the hallway, Charlotte ran into a policeman. He was carrying some kind of box in his hands. See, these are the ropes the perpetrator used to strangle his victims. The policeman showed Charlotte the contents of the box. We are very busy with this high-profile incident, so we have absolutely no time to babysit the likes of you. So sit here for a while and sober up. Ask the policeman to the girl. John came to Charlotte and explained to her that he couldn't be her confidant, so he wouldn't be able to get her out of jail. It's all gone! What am I supposed to do now? Who will be able to free me? We can't let the emperor find out about this. He will definitely punish me, Charlotte exclaimed, clutching her head. The girl had no choice but to turn to Duke Adler for help. And what are you doing here? What happened to you? A worried Duke Adler asked the girl. Sweat was running down his face. It was obvious that he had gotten to the police station at a run. Duke, you came to see me after all. Even the drops of sweat on your face look very pretty. As you've already noticed, I'm sitting behind bars, Charlotte exclaimed. I was told you were put in here for disorderly conduct while drunk. What's wrong with your hair? Is it a wig? The Duke asked in surprise. You see, there are situations in a girl's life when she wants to get a little rowdy. Charlotte winked cheerfully at the Duke. She asked, releasing her and keeping the fact that she was a princess a secret. Duke Adler, what are you doing here? Asked the investigators who entered. They didn't expect the Duke himself to come to the police station to release a drunken girl. Renicus paid the girl's bail and signed all the necessary papers. That's it. You can come out now. You're free to go, said the girl to the Duke. Thank you. You were the only one who could help me in this situation. I couldn't have done it without you. With embarrassed eyes looking away, Charlotte said, You didn't hurt yourself? Are you all right? Asked Renicus to the girl. Thank you, I'm fine, answered Charlotte. Since I don't have anything planned today, let's go out with you, suggested the Duke. The suggestion surprised Charlotte, but she decided to agree. I haven't had fried meat in a long time, so you and I can go to a steak restaurant, Charlotte exclaimed excitedly. Okay, we'll go to wherever you want to go, replied the Duke. Charlotte noticed that he was upset about something. She remembered that it was at the steak restaurant where the second victim had been killed. And why did you decide to change your appearance and get drunk in that alley? Asked the Duke to Charlotte as they waited for their order. I heard there was a popular establishment there, but I knew that if a princess was seen in it and drinking too, it wouldn't end well. Charlotte lied. And why did you decide to get drunk? Asked the Duke again. The girl answered him that she had stress built up, so she just wanted to get intoxicated to forget herself. Strange, I've never had the urge to get drunk to the point of forgetting myself mumbled the duke. I realize I'm very strange in your eyes. I apologize to you for embarrassing you, said Charlotte and smiled sweetly. Could it be that the reason you wanted to forget yourself was because of me? I am very sorry for what happened on the day of Lady Mostyn's debut. I made a great mistake that day. I apologize that in my carelessness I offended you. Suddenly the duke said, I want to thank you, though belatedly, for helping my sister. I could not pass by your sister, for it is not long before you and I will be one family, Charlotte exclaimed. Hearing the girl's words, Renicus realized that all his efforts were not in vain. It was not in vain that he had rushed to save her, and it was not in vain that he had come here. When the girl stopped writing him letters, the Duke thought that she had decided to break off the engagement. Now she sits in front of him without a gram of makeup on her face in the clothes of a commoner, and talks about the fact that they will soon become a family. To be honest, I didn't want to go to that restaurant. I don't have the best memories of my last visit here, Duke admitted. What is it? Does he really want to talk about the crime he committed? 
Surprised, Charlotte thought. Two months ago, the chef decided to change the degree of rareness of my steak to his liking. He made it medium rare. The chef said it was the only way to fully savor the flavor of the meat. Duke began to recount. You may find this funny, but I go into a state of panic when I smell blood. That goes for steak as well. I almost showed that undignified side of me to my sister Blair and stepmother that day. That can't be. A man who went through a military academy panics at the smell of blood? The girl marveled. No need to make such a pitying face. When my mom was dying, she often vomited blood, so this smell reminds me of the despair I felt back then. When I remember that picture, it makes it hard for me to breathe. The Duke admitted. That's why, when I graduated from the military academy, I didn't join the army. I kept thinking maybe my mother would still be alive if I had stayed home instead of going to the academy. You see, my father didn't take care of my mother well enough. You know, I never told anyone about it, ever. For some reason, I felt like telling you specifically. Maybe it's because we're going to be a family soon. Charlotte called the waiter over and asked him to make sure her meat was well done, so that there would be no odor of blood. You don't need to change the degree of frying because of what I told you. I won't smell any odor from your plate, said the Duke to the girl. Charlotte replied to him that she just wanted the meat well done. Charlotte understood the Duke's anguish well. In a previous life, when the girl was a little girl, she had persuaded her parents to go to an amusement park. On the way there, their car had been in an accident. Only Charlotte remained unharmed and alive. For many years, Charlotte blamed herself for what had happened. The girl thought that if she hadn't talked her parents into going to the park that day, they would still be alive. Everything that happened then was not your fault, so don't blame yourself. Charlotte covered the Duke's hand with her palm. It is not appropriate to imbue one's feelings for the subject of an investigation, but I comforted him without realizing it myself. My mind is a veritable mess right now. What is the matter with me? Charlotte thought as she lay in bed. I don't have time for such mental torment. I need to focus on the crime. Need to figure out why the evidence was tampered with. I need to analyze everything I learned at the station. Maybe the Marquis Breguet's killer and the serial killer are different people. This man tampered with the evidence to pin this murder on the serial killer as well. However, evidence can be tampered with not only in the Marquis Breguet murder, but in other cases too. I haven't seen the bodies of the other victims, so I can't say they weren't poisoned either. What struck me was the fact that all the ropes had the same peculiar knot on them. Assuming that all the victims were first poisoned and then strangled, the perpetrator could be a rather weak man and under 180 centimeters. Blair told me the other day about their past governess. She was a distracted person, constantly busy writing her research paper. That's why the Duke fired her. The second victim was the cook who changed the degree of roasting of the Duke's meat. Both victims had a point of contact with the Duke and had once messed with him. But could that be the reason for the murder? The Duke is certainly quite cold, but doesn't seem at all like a man capable of cold-blooded murder. In addition, the novel noted that he wasn't the murderer, but merely a suspect. If that's the case, then who is the real culprit? Last time we couldn't humanly end our meeting because of the attempted poisoning. I'm glad we're finally meeting again. Let's begin our meeting. In a loud voice, the emperor said. Looking at Camilla, Charlotte noted to herself that she was up to something. The Marquis of Dust had also joined the breakfast. Camilla had influence over him. Your Highness, I would like an opinion on a matter. And with this matter, I would like to address Charlotte. Marquis d'Ast exclaimed. He asked the question using many legal terms that were long familiar to Charlotte. Well, this is a topic of extreme interest to me. Where shall we begin? Charlotte exclaimed excitedly. It had been a long time since she had talked to anyone about legal topics. She really missed her time as a prosecutor. I don't think I have anything else to add. That was a very good answer, said Marquis some time later. It is more than satisfactory. Charlotte has not left the library as of late and is constantly studying. Her studies are yielding results, joyfully exclaimed the emperor. You overestimate me, your majesty, Charlotte replied with a smile. She was pleased that Camilla had not succeeded in making her look bad in front of the emperor. A butler approached the emperor and handed him a list of planned official court events. Hmm. Isn't it already time for the Imperial League meeting? The emperor said in surprise as he ran his eyes over the list of events. 
The Imperial League meeting is a gathering attended by representatives of the mandated countries of the Asgard Empire, represented by officials of the highest ranks. The event is founded to perpetuate and reaffirm the friendship of nations. Due to recent events, we have excluded participants from Cortina, Butler reported. This time the event will be held more solemnly than ever before so that no other country will even dare to perform such an act of Cortina, announced the Emperor. Should we prepare to hold Princess Camilla's birthday party at the Imperial Palace this year? asked the butler. No, this year we will hold her birthday party at the Princess Palace. Princess Charlotte's birthday will be held at the Imperial Palace, replied the Emperor. Father, shouted Camilla, jumping up from her seat. The Emperor didn't listen to her. He silently left the meeting hall. And what just happened? Surprised Charlotte thought. Charlotte knew that the birthdays of princes and princesses were usually held in their own palaces, but it was customary for the birthday of one of the Emperor's chosen children to be held in the Imperial Palace. If Princess Charlotte hadn't suspected something amiss, Camilla would have been the only one alive among us to take the throne, said Prince Philip on the day of the poisoning, and apparently those words were enough for the Emperor to doubt Camilla. Princess, today is the day of our rendezvous. Do you remember that? asked Charlotte as Duke Adler approached. It appears that you possess a very deep knowledge of the law of the Empire. Where were you trained in this? asked the Duke to the girl. Charlotte had to lie that she had emphasized this knowledge from books. Would you be my partner in this ball in honor of the Imperial League meeting? To be honest, I really like to take part in this event. So will you come with me? asked the Duke. Of course, I would love to go with you to this event, said Charlotte, painting a joyful smile on her face. Is there anything else you want to tell me? With an embarrassed cough, the Duke asked, What is wrong with him today? What's gotten into him? What words I usually say that I didn't say today? The girl thought in surprise. Duke, and you have something on your cheek, said Charlotte. The Duke shuddered fearfully. Don't be frightened. You have your beauty on your cheek, exclaimed Charlotte. The Duke touched his cheek in embarrassment. Did he seriously want to hear compliments from me? It turns out I'm like a compliment machine to him. Is this shy man a serial killer? Charlotte thought to herself. Actually, that's not what I wanted to talk to you about. I heard that on the day of Lady Mostyn's debut, your dress was ruined. It was because you helped my sister. Therefore, I am obligated to make amends to you, said the Duke to the girl. I will pay for the cost of the dress you will wear to the ball for the Imperial League meeting. You don't need to worry about that. I've been given a bigger budget, so I'll be able to buy myself a new dress. Besides, there's still the dress I bought for Lady Mostyn's debut. Charlotte waved her arms protestingly. The Imperial League meeting is a huge event and is attended by high-ranking officials from all over the Empire. If you are going to be my partner at this ball, you are required to wear your finest dress, noted the Duke. Are you saying that the dress I bought for Lady Mostyn's debut is of no particular quality and cannot be the finest? asked Charlotte. No, that's not what I meant. I just thought it would be nice if we bought your dress from the best boutique in the Empire. I made a huge blunder at the last ball, so I want to make it up to you, the Duke exclaimed fearfully. If you schedule a visit to the boutique, I will go along with you. However, I will be paying for my dresses, said Charlotte. She understood that the Duke held a high public office, so he wanted a partner without a single flaw by his side. Charlotte also realized that the Duke wanted to go shopping with her to find her clothes that would match his status. He was afraid she would buy a dress that was too revealing or too brightly colored. It turns out that the last place the Marquis of Breguet was seen in before his death was the ball in honor of Lady Mostyn's debut, said John. Yes, I ran into him that day too. Can't say it was a pleasant encounter, narrated Charlotte. It is rumored that a scandal broke out between Duke Adler and the Marquis. Afterward, the Marquis was found dead, noted John. What's the matter? With all the victims, the Duke had misunderstandings. Why do the people he clashes with die? Thought to herself Charlotte. John, did you find out why the nobleman ended up in Nowood Alley? Charlotte asked. There are rumors around the capital that he went there to meet with some of the human traffickers who are based in that alley. It turns out that the Marquis's hands were not clean, narrated John. In his day, the Marquis of Breguet blew a fortune and became the commander of Cortina after joining the Imperial Army. He was a real villain to the people of Cortina due to his horrible treatment of them. 
Recently, rumors have been circulating that the Empire has started selling captured Cortina children who were orphaned after the war. Unfortunately, at the moment, there is nothing the Empire can do about it. Of course, there is a law that forbids human trafficking, but no one can accuse a nobleman of such a misdemeanor without hard evidence. Imperial law is harsh only on commoners. By the way, did you manage to examine the body at the morgue? Anyway, I just looked around the morgue since I knew that looking at a corpse would be too scary for me. Charlotte lied. She didn't fully trust John, so she didn't want to reveal all her cards in front of him. Through her channels, Charlotte had learned that John Watson had served in the army as an investigator. At one time, he had investigated the Marcus of Breguet's atrocities against the people of Cortina. What he learned, he reported to his superior. John's superior did not like John investigating the case, so he ordered it closed. When John resisted the order, the supervisor pointed a gun at him. John, seeing the threat, decided to disarm his supervisor. It ended up in court with a charge of assault on a superior, and John was sent to jail. Marquis Breguet was the very man who perjured himself at John's trial. Therefore, Charlotte was worried that John might hold a grudge against the Marquis. Roughly speaking, he was also a suspect. The next day, Charlotte went shopping to buy the most expensive dress. The girl was very sorry to spend money on some dress that she would only wear once, but there was no other way. When the dress was chosen, Charlotte looked at the check. The amount was half of what she had calculated. The girl guessed that someone had decided to pay half the cost of the dress she would choose. Hudson, did you notice that on the check the cost of the dress was half the price? I'm sure Duke Adler set the whole thing up exclaimed Charlotte as she left the store. And what have I set up already? Charlotte heard the Duke's voice behind her. Oh, Duke, I wasn't expecting to see you today, the girl exclaimed. Lately she had been surprised by the Duke's ability to appear at the most unexpected moment. Sometimes it seemed to her that the Duke was stalking her. And what if he really was? Then what did he want from her?